Welcome back aboard Arabella. After getting the new sail covers installed, Steve laces the sails on in hopes of taking the boat out on some warm winter day. He'll have to wait until the snowstorm in the forecast passes, of course. And this is something where we'll, we'll take our best stab at it now, and we'll take it out sailing and kind of pay attention to it, and we'll be able to tighten or adjust the lacings a little bit. This is Dyneema line, so it's crazy strong. It does really good with chafe, but it's very slippery. So I am just gonna keep throwing half hitches in here and basically want lots of, lots of these that have to come untied. So if I were to clip it short and one or two of these came mm -hmm. undone, I might have the whole thing come undone. But if I just keep hitching and hitching and hitching and hitching, I can lose half of them before it becomes an issue. And by the time you lose half of them, you'll have this tail that you didn't have before. And then I know that you gotta take a look at those tiny knots. I'm just lacing the sail on. To lace the bottom of the sail to the boom, the line needed to pass through the sail cover. And where those points needed to be was easier to figure out once the cover was fully attached. You don't even need to mark them, huh? Oh, I did mark them. Oh! Uh, see how the stitching here is black? I held it tight and I marked the stitching with the Sharpie. And then I can fold it on its center and then just punch through. And I'm making these a few inches long and kind of a little bit of a hole. I don't want the lacings for the sail to get caught on the cover and impede the sail. Okay. I want that to be able to move kind of within the sail cover. So this is where we want the wiggle room. Okay, towards me. A lot nicer and easier than sail ties, huh? Seems it, yeah. Yeah, it's still a little bit of work to get it like stuffed down and put away, but way, way less work than the sail ties. Well, we went to the bike shop in Hyannis and we asked the guy where to go for like some more technical riding trails. He was pretty quick to say the Badlands in Yarmouth. So we're at the Badlands uh, in West Yarmouth, East Yarmouth. One direction of Yarmouth. Um, and uh, it looks like, all right, the riding at the Badlands ranges from the sublime to the ridiculous. Many of the single tracks are smooth and flowy, completely lacking in rocks or roots as the glide up, down, and around some very gentle hills. On the other extreme, the ridiculous is the Badland Trail. Although the whole area is referred to by the locals as the Badlands, the Badland Trail itself is a deviously constructed single track that winds itself over and around every defilement, rock, crevice, and drop that could be found at a long abandoned sand pit. You'll know when you're on it because it will be like, uh, it could, because it will be unlike anything you've ever ridden or walked before. I think I know where we're going. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Oh. 
Robin and I are <laughs> very busy people, uh, but we're lucky to be able to get outside here and there and make a little bit of time for ourselves to go for a climb or go for a bike, get some fresh air and clear our heads. BetterHelp, the sponsor for today's video, has been there for us when getting outside and going for a ride isn't quite enough. So whether we're on the boat or even here in the woods, we've been able to connect with our own licensed therapist. I have a little experience with therapy, but it's been a while and it's been really easy getting started up again and trying it out in a stress-free way. So if we've got good connection, we can do it through video call and when service is a little spottier, uh, we can talk over the telephone, which has been really helpful. It was a real simple questionnaire to fill out and then BetterHelp says that most people get paired with one of their 30,000 available therapists within 48 hours. And that was our experience. And once you're matched, it's really easy to, to set up some times and, and get started. There's a, a lot of availability with, with meeting and discussing. If you think you might benefit from some therapy and someone to talk to, consider giving BetterHelp a try. Uh, you can click in the link in the description below or you can visit betterhelp.com forward slash acorn. Clicking that link helps the channel a little bit and it also gives you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp um, so you can get chatting with a therapist and see if it helps you. I'm working on installing the reef line here. So the mizzen just has one reef and when I was talking with Ed, his suggestion was to have a single point that it went back to. But Robbie Doyle was saying that we should pull it on either side of the mast so that on either tack it's uh, pulled equally. But I have one end attached to the pad eye. And on the other sides, can I come over here to a cleat? And I'm trying to make sure that we're not chafing on the hardware here, so pull it around a little bit till it's out of the way, and I don't want it to impede with lacing onto, you know, using this um, blank pin here. It's a little breezy. Sometimes the uh, walk down the dock feels really, really long. Today is one of those days. Brr. So we got a couple hours to high tide. We're supposed to have a good surge. I'm interested to see if uh, if this floods or not. And so far, I've seen this sh sh almost shin deep once in water. So you can see the the growth line there. It's kind of where. High tide ends up being somewhere in that ballpark. And I've seen the water up and over this. So we'll see if that happens today. We might be stuck on the boat for a bit at high tide and not be able to get off the docks. So thankfully this storm's mostly a north-ish wind. So for us that's that's no big deal. This harbor is really well protected for that. So when it comes out of the south, southeast, southwest, that we start to get kind of buffeted around a little bit in here, so I actually kind of hope we get a few inches. It'd be kind of, kind of fun. Hope it doesn't stick around. <laughs> We 
got some snow. What do you think, Akiva? Go for a walk? Go for a walk? Go out in the snow? Got it! Jump! Good boy! Well, I've got a, got a few inches of snow. It's a little less slushy now and a little more snowy. But we're not flooding yet. Well, it felt like spring just the other day. And uh, it definitely feels like winter again. So we've gotten a little bit of snow this winter, but I feel like this is Arabella's first real snow. Like this isn't uh, this isn't a little dusting on the dock. This isn't oh there's just a little snow on the Samson post. This is we gotta be careful when we open the hatch that the snow building up doesn't fall into the boat. Mind if we take a quick pit stop, honey? Yeah, so Akiva and I were locked up in the boat all day with the weather, and he's pretty antsy and needs to go for a stroll. We won't say the W word because he'll get too excited. <laughs> but we've, just, we've stopped on our journey. What's so important? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a little filler upper. And uh, Cape Roots is... Right up the street from the boat. Mid-morning coffee? Or which which coffee is this? This is my mid-morning coffee. Later on, we'll we'll get my afternoon espresso. <laughs> so my guess is this is what's left of the stairs. Yeah. Probably before the storms this winter, my guess is that there was a staircase here. Can you stop me from walking into the ocean? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. There's few things in life I like more than walking hand in hand on the beach with you. On Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. With nobody else around. Oh my gosh, not a soul. These waves are something. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know where everybody else is. Yeah, it's such a beautiful day. It's a beautiful sunny day at the beach. It's it's like a balmy 28 degrees. I don't know where everyone else is. Someone left this sweet chair here. It reclines. <laughs> you know? It's, So what do you think? Was this big old chunk of concrete once way up there? Yeah, I think it was once part of the sidewalk. Yeah. Pretty soon it's going to be ground up and part of the ocean.
Yeah, they, uh, they chewed up the extension cord pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. They ate the sheath off oh. there. Wow. And here. Thankfully, the only wire they nicked was the ground wire. Other than that, this sh it just seems like a lot of sheath damage. So I gotta, I gotta tape that up and fix that. It's a cold one. So this is a uh, nice, super fancy, not so fancy rig for emptying the jugs. Piece of PEX goes in. A little suction action. And then we let gravity do its work. So I haven't timed it, but I think emptying the jugs into the water tank is the longest part of this process. But I had the uh, I had the hose on hand and I had some pecs for when we finally finished hooking up the hot water heater. Um, so that's what I had on hand. If we were gonna do this eternally, I would definitely get a bigger tube and a bigger hose so that this part of this was faster. But at least you don't have to do anything. You can walk away. And it, just empties itself and do the next one. So quite a long while ago now, I did some research and asked around and it seemed like Spectra Watermakers was kind of the brand to go with. So I called Spectra and said, you know, I'm doing this cruising boat and we plan to go to some high northern and southern latitudes and we need a water maker. And the person that I talked to there said, get the Ventura 200T, it's the model that's made for cruisers, that's what you want, get that, you won't be disappointed. Awesome. Ordered it up, gave it to Kyle, Kyle installed it, and it ran great all summer. And then when we were up in Maine, the feed pump pressure started going higher and higher and higher. So there's a few things that can cause that. So I swapped out filters and gave everything a clean and checked to make sure that there wasn't some sort of blockage uh, and everything was flowing fine, but the water maker is still running at way too high of a PSI. Okay. So here's our readout for the water maker. So we've got our feed water pressure and we've got our gallons per hour or liters per hour. So there's a little steel ball in here when this is running, kind of goes up and hovers seven, eight gallons an hour, and then drops and goes up and drops. That's kind of how that works. And the feed pressure does a similar thing. So it's when we first started running it this summer, it was like 80, 90 PSI. It would maybe go up to 100 and drop back down and just sit right in there. And then as fall turned to winter, that PSI just started climbing and climbing and climbing. And the feed pump has a shut off, I believe it's 125 or 130 PSI. And we were hitting that. So the pump was working at its max load and it sounded like an incredibly unhappy pump. Uh, so we're gonna burn the feed pump out. And when it's peaking and it's 
making too much high PSI, it's cutting the pump off. So at that point, we're not even making water and we're destroying a pump and barely making any water in the process. So I called Spectra and what I learned was that the Ventura 200T is indeed made for cruisers and they are assuming that cruisers are in the tropics. So the 200T does not want to work with water that is below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And when we are dealing with the surface here freezing, that water is absolutely well below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So that cold water temperature is what's been causing the feed water pressure to go through the roof and what's been causing that pump to shut off and it's what's causing that pump to be incredibly unhappy. So I called Spectra, explained the situation. We figured out that it was because I needed a different model. And I told them that that was the model that I was instructed to get from Spectra and asked if there was kind of anything we could do. Their response was essentially like, sucks to suck, you bought the wrong one, it's on you. So a new water maker is $9,000, uh, which we certainly don't have. Um, but the solution that we came up with is to switch out the center block pump and churn it from a Ventura 200T to a Ventura 150. And the difference between those two is that center block pump and it has to do with how much recovery you're getting. So I have to check the numbers, but I believe it's like the 150 is a 7% recovery, freshwater, saltwater, and the 200T is 10% or something like that. It's just a few percentage difference. And what happens is the feed pressure pump runs at a lower pressure. So when we get into the cold water, instead of it spiking to 120 and shutting off, it's spiking to 90 or 100 or 110, which the pump is okay and it can handle. So we gotta get that switched out. I think they look amazing. You don't think it looks funny with the, uh, the white sails sticking out of the red bags? I actually think it looks really cool. Kind of looks like a, a racing stripe. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing we could do that people do is to get to put the name of the boat on the stack packs. Oh. Which is something that we could do. Could be a fun rainy day activity.